Hi, it's Adam Butte here. Excited to be part of the online prosperity show with Prosper. In today's episode, we actually uncover three key topics that I know will help you scale your business, make more sales and increase your profits. The first thing we talk about is the transition of the markets. What's happened? We're moving away from the industrial age of selling. We're moving into the new age of business. Uh, a lot of things that we talked about in this episode also cover um, being more authentic in our operations. And the most important part about it is understanding the buyer's journey. When we get clear on the difference between selling and people wanting to buy, that's when your sales, your retention rates go up, your referral business will go up, and most importantly, your profits go up. So now you have yourself a saleable business. So tune in, this is going to be a good one. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the self strategist himself, Adam. Adam, how are you doing today? Hey, Prosper. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this show right now, you would know that we are always bringing you experts in their own realm. And today we've brought you a sales expert. Now, Adam is an international um, internationally published author, sales expert, and course creator. He helps, um, you know, growth mindset and purpose driven business owners to scale their businesses by increasing their sales, profits, systems, and creating them um, more time to work on their business instead of in it. So they can actually have a sellable asset of real value. And as you understand, we always want that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Adam, I can't thank you enough to, uh, you know, join us on the call today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started in the whole game of sales. Yeah, thanks, boss. But well, I think like most people, we tend to fall in sales. It's not something that we strategically go out there to do. <laughs> um, but I did that. I fell into it at an early age, and and that was because I uh, I didn't have any formal qualifications at school when I finished. Um, so I just started that whole retail journey and got up into sales repping and and then from sales repping got into um, managing retail stores and then from there the commission game started back in 2000 and that was when my whole world changed. Uh, that's when I learned what real sales is all about. Um, that's when I had to seriously upskill um, because in that commission sales environment, if you don't sell, you don't eat, you don't eat, there is no job. <laughs> so, um, but it's fascinating, you know, whether it was, um, and it was multiple industries um, across that career, whether it was face-to-face, -face, whether it was phone-based, whether it was, as you can see here on stage or whether it was online, um, at the end of the day, the sales is the same. It doesn't matter what it is and it doesn't matter what type of sales it is. But what I learned um, very early well, not very early. It took me a long time to get to this, but five years ago, it wasn't until I had my first six-figure commission month where you know, over 100 grand lobbed in the bank account that I realized everything I was doing was wrong. Wow. That's a great realization and a good chunk of change for you to um, you know, prove that what you're doing is wrong. On your website, you talk about you know a system that actually works i thought selling is just you getting in front of the right person with the right message and telling them to buy stuff that you um uh, you have in your hands that's what they teach you they teach you how to tell other people to buy but unfortunately um there is no such thing as as telling people to buy anymore we are moving into um a new age of business where it's not about selling anymore but it's about the buyer's journey and understanding where the buyers are at and giving back the power to the people essentially to make a empowered decision for them that they want to buy from you instead of you having to sell to them so all sales trading and, and i've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars learning all the tricks of the trade prosper to overcome objections and to close deals and and to know what to say when the wife says this and to know what to say when the secretary says that and to know and to whether it's integrity led processes whether it's ethical selling at the end of the day selling if you're doing it to get a sale 
you have no interest in the greater good of what your clients are going to get from the products or services that you're delivering because that's all about us. Whereas when we're doing it from our buyer's point of view, it then becomes all about them. Absolutely. And what actually brought about this change? Because I would have realized, or back in the times, you know, people would just knock on people's doors and, you know, cox them to change their electricity or their insurance. What actually changed in, in, in how people buy things? Um, well, the, the internet changed it all because I think the consumers now have so much information um, at their fingertips that they're doing so much research now before they're wanting to buy. But what it's also done is it's given businesses the opportunity to absolutely spam people. And, and because they have been spammed so much, whether it's phone calls, whether it's emails, whether it's advertising, bang, 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 bang in our faces, consumers became disengaged. And that's why you know you come from that marketing space and, and you're an expert in what you do. But why does a consumer need 21 touch points before they're ready to buy? That's a lot of nurturing, you know? Whereas, what was it 10 years ago? Three, four? Pretty much somebody would just decide they wanted to buy a car and the next thing is they're walking to the car yard. That's right. Yeah. But, but now because, because the consumers have been so bombarded by the information and they have become disengaged, then what we see is that the businesses and the salespeople in the businesses have to push harder, push harder, push harder. And the more push, the more resistance you get. And because of that resistance that they get from one company, they then take that resistance into the next place and that becomes part of their buying decision. So the next person has got to unpack all of that stuff before they've got them ready to buy from them. Absolutely. You mentioned something that is near and dear to me that, you know, people take an upwards of 21 sort of touch points. Like in your experience in the sales field, how do you then, you know, do enough activities up until it gets to at least that sort of 21 touch points? Are you just talking to people or what, what else is included now, um, you know, in the whole process? Well, that's where uh, that's where the system has changed, you know. So, what what we're talking about in that model of the world is is um, is what I label the industrial age of business. Yeah, um, the industrial age is the business is business philosophy. Right? Don't take it personally. It's just business. If I hear that again, that means that the people that say that to me have absolutely no interest in me as a human being, as a consumer as a client, as a referral part, they've got no interest in me. They just see me as a walking ATM, you know? Um, if it's all about KPIs, again, there's no interest in me. There's no care about me. It's all about them. You know, if it's all fear-based and you have to constantly push and push and push and push, who are we doing that for? Are we doing that for them or are we doing that for us? And, and because that model doesn't work, and it can't work. I mean, if it's 21 touch points now and it was three to five touch points eight to 10 years ago, what's going to be the touch points in five or eight years' time? 50? How, how could you? Absolutely. Yeah. So all of this sounds like it's going to cost a lot more money, um, you know, just trying to bring in the sales than it actually, you know, would be bringing in in terms of profit. How do you work around or how do you teach people to market without spending any money so that's when we move away from the industrial age of selling and we move into the new age of selling um and this is something that you're exceptional at as well because i've seen the way that you work for a long time so we move away from that transactional base and we move into the relationship base and through that relationship base we now start talking about things like collaboration strategic partnerships referral partnerships, affiliate partnerships, like they're partnerships, but they're all collaborative based. Yep. And, and when they're collaborative based, the, the next thing that the businesses need to understand to, to really succeed at this is bring that collaboration away from the business partners and move that collaboration also into their clients. So when you're collaborating with your clients, 
there's no pushing, there's no shoving, there's no forcing. You know, we're actually in it to win it together. And, and that way, we now create a raving fan model. And that raving fan model is what supplies us on the constant leads, higher quality, faster closing times, never price driven. So you don't have to compete with your, with your opposition to get the, to get the business. Um, faster closing times as well, longer retention rates, and, and obviously more referrals. So if we look at the, um, and this is what uh, a presentation I did yesterday, the transactional world has a 3% return. You generate 100 leads, you'll get three sales. That's it, all right? There's a lot of sovereign hill days of fossicking through all that fool's gold until you can find a little chunk that's actually going to buy. Too much, too much work. So business owners go into business for three things. We want more time, we want more money, we want more freedom, yeah? That's, that's why we do it. But the reason that small business owners never have more time, never have more money, and never have more freedom is because they're spending too much time doing the wrong activity, too much money, like what you say, trying to generate the leads, and that doesn't allow them the freedom to be spending more time working on their business so that they can scale it up because they're too hard, uh, too much stuck in that business to not get anywhere. So it's a 3% return in transactional. So you get 100 leads. What people don't understand is that 60% of those leads actually are not interested in what you've got to sell them. So you're taking out 60% of the population before you start. Then you're stuck with 40% of the population that you've generated. And through that buyer's journey in the transactional world, uh, and you probably know all this, Prosper, but 60% are not interested. 20% have done their research. They know they want to buy something, but they don't know what it is. That's when they walk into the shops and we start to have those you know, problem-solving conversations to try and help them move to that next stage of the buying cycle. 17% of the people, so 17 out of 100, think they know what they want, think they're ready to buy, but they just need a few bits and pieces to clarify that they're making the right decision. A great example of that, recently we purchased a car and we, um, my wife and I had in our mind that we were looking for an exact make and an exact model, right? An exact brand. We went to the car yard We specifically for one car. We drove out with a completely different brand <laughs> and a completely different model and everything. And that was because when we compared the two, we actually realized that the second car suited our needs better than what we thought the first car was, but we were already ready to buy. So we were in that 17% group, 3% know what they want. They've done their research. They're ready to buy. They jump on the internet. They look for the cheapest price. They hit the button done. You know, so that's a lot of people and a lot of work and a lot of processes in that transactional model right? A lot of time, a lot of money spent to, to generate those leads. In the relationship model, if, you're ref if, if you get 10 referrals, right? It doesn't matter over what time frame, 10 referrals. I can guarantee that if you're not having at least eight conversations with those 10 people, that there's something wrong with your systems and your processes. Because these people are coming to you specifically because they have already been told you're the go-to person. Right, So you've now got eight conversations out of 10 leads versus a maximum 40 conversations out of 100. So let's peg that back to four out of 10 instead of 40 out of 100, right? So you've doubled your conversation rate. If you suck at sales and you really don't have the skills and the right communication and you only get five out of those eight people become a customer, because you really should be getting at least six or seven of them. The only reason that they won't be a client of yours is if you actually can't help them solve their, their, their problem. What's your closing rate? It goes from eight conversations to five sales. You're at a 60, 70% closing rate. And if you want to get better with that, you turn that into 90% by learning how to actually communicate. But here's where the magic is. In the old traditional world, and I just saw this yesterday on a another sales training company up here on the Gold Coast, he got a private group. And in that group, he said, he wrote this question. 
what's the first thing you do after someone pays you? And then someone piped up straight away, go through your teleprompter and give me all the names of people that are going to want what you want. Hit me with your referrals was basically the tone of, of what he said. That's not going to work. Right? You're not going to, no one's going to give you referrals because you've sold them into something. But if they buy from you, and here's where the magic is, people will only refer to you if they are ready to repeat buy off you again. That's the only time you'll get a real referral. If they are prepared to rebuy. In a transactional world, if you've sold someone, the likelihood of client retention is so low because they've been sold into something. How do they feel after they've been sold? Versus how do they feel after they buy? And the reason that people buy is we buy off emotion that makes us feel good. And then we go away and justify that with logic. So if you are really great at sales and you convince someone to do something and they buy off you, then they go home and they justify with logic why they've just done that. They're never gonna stick with you and they're never gonna refer. But if they buy off you because you've collaborated and you understand the long-term client value, an average client should stick with you for at least three years. That's the, that's the statistics if you're doing your job right. And if you're not doing your job right, you've got problems with your sales, you've got problems with your systems, you've got problems with your processes if they're not sticking with you for longer periods of time. And business owners don't get that it costs them five times as much to get a new sale as what it does to get a repeat sale. So your profits are going up substantially on that repeat business. Absolutely. So obviously from, you know, what you've just mentioned is just, you know, when we switch from the transactional world of selling, which was basically something that is a construct of the industrial age, it doesn't work anymore. People are already, you know, um, informed and they've already done their research all you got to do is just actually um you know help them make that decision in the purchasing sort of phase that there's a lot of um you know authenticity that then needs to be brought into the table because if you're going to show up in front of people and literally even if they want to buy from you and you tell them, I'm sorry, I'm not the person for you, um, you know, just so that you are doing something good by them. Um, do you know what I mean? That's sort of the, 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 the method and the sort of strategy you're talking about. How important is authenticity in the current sales process and how does it actually help you increase your sales conversion rates? That's why I named the business, the authentic sales training company because i believe that now more so than ever that whole know me like me trust me model is still part of the industrial age of selling all right because what we're still trying to do is is um create that no like and trust it's very analytical whereas in the new age um, people resonate with people it's a subconscious thing it's we're energetical beings yeah if you are being authentic, the other person in front of you knows you're being authentic. They know you're being genuine. They can feel it, right? If you're not, that's why arms are always crossed because they don't want to let you in. That's why they've already shut out you know, with their ears. They're not listening to what you've got to say. So when it comes to business, the biggest superpower you would have is actually telling someone, no, I can't help you, but prospers the person that can. That will create you more referrals than you could possibly imagine because that person will then say to their friends, and every individual has a circle of 150 people. That's, that's all it is, right? They'll have a conversation about you somewhere at a barbecue, and they'll say, I went and saw this guy, and he was so good that he didn't, he, he didn't try to sell me but he sent me to someone else that could. I'd absolutely refer you talk to him because I know he'd look after you. Wow. wow. Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a whole different game ball to every other sales book that's in my bookshelf right now, because, you know, some people like Grant Cardona always telling people to always be 
closing where as you are you know talking about really collaborative and creating relationships now how um you know would people start the journey of building these relationships that will actually um you know help them create businesses that are profitable and, and enjoyable yeah that's a really good question i think um if you can understand that that everyone it doesn't matter what business that you're in you could be in marketing you could be a doctor you could be a mechanic we are all in sales okay that's what it is the profession is different to the action so firstly accept the fact that you're in sales once you've accepted that fact what you then need to do is understand that sales is not what you do but sales is an extension of who you are so when we start to bring out into the world who who are who adam is who prosper is and we're demonstrating that congruently message after message after message in all of our material that we're doing that resonation that people get with you is unbreakable because they can't they can't that, that whole too good to be true thing that whole i'm looking for the catch thing that that comes with that problem that people have when they buy because they're so tired of being ripped off yeah that that can never happen because all of your marketing material all of your messaging all of your communication is actually an extension of who you are first and then what you do second so if you're looking to bring in collaborative partners you be yourself if you're looking to bring in referral partners you be yourself if you're looking to create a field you just be yourself do not be someone else and make sure that everything that you put out in that world is a complete reflection of you and that way um, as you would know prosper the right people will gravitate to you all the time absolutely i think it was uh seth gordon that mentioned people like us do things like this you know you always gravitate to the people that are um doing sort of the similar things like yourself now just going on to maybe a personal side um you know of sales because obviously um not everyone is going to be um you know in the same sort of sales board you you know you broke your own record when you got that first um you know six figure commission month and then you realized that whatever you were doing was completely wrong what were you personally doing and what was wrong about it it's such a good question um so when i joined that company i joined that company under the lure of the possible money that could be made okay so the lure for me was the money then the lure was well it's a good product that product can actually make a difference so i like that too but when i spent all the time focusing purely on the goal of hitting that hundred thousand dollar commission month and i finally got it and it took me four years to get to that stage where i got it for the first time um i felt unsatisfied i felt unfulfilled and i felt like i'm, I'm something's missing here because i've spent all this time looking for this goal and when i hit it i wasn't jumping off the roof for joy and and the realization came to me prosper that at that moment i had taken large sums of money off people that have bought products and services that they will never use and they can't use and that was done for my own personal gain you so bad bad man <laughs> terrible <laughs> but what it also highlighted mate is every single commission only job that i had was all the same here i am selling stuff to people that don't need what i'm selling because if they needed it they'd be coming to me to buy i wouldn't have to find all these different techniques and methods and whatever to convince people why they should buy absolutely i can imagine i mean especially in my world um there's a lot of people that just get sold onto digital marketing activities and services that they cannot use or don't even understand why they need um you know su such things and it's 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 just what the industry has become now adam if somebody's watching this show right now and they're really 
um, you know, gravitating, like you said, towards everything that you're saying, um, what would be the best way for people to sort of get started with you just so that they can actually, um, you know, start really getting good sales um, from the products and services that they are offering out there? Yeah, thanks. So first thing that I always do is I offer a, um, a quick check-in call. We have a phone call just to see who they're at, who they are, where they're at, what their problems are, um, and then whether or not I can assist them with that. And then from there, there's no one fits all. You know, we, we, we look at sales and yes, sales to me is quite generic, but where people are at in their development, what people don't understand that with sales, it's not skills. It's not about overcoming objections and closing sales. What it is, it's about mindset and it's about leadership. And, and I spend a lot of time working with individuals on increasing their leadership skills and fixing their mind because they're operating from the industrial age. So undoing all that is what leads them on the journey to, to, to greater prosperity. All right. So um, with that, I've got an online program, but I also do one-on-one -on -one and group coaching and, and tailored consulting as well, depending on what the individual's needs are. Uh, we can determine that on the call and it's all tailored. There's not, there's nothing generic about it. Absolutely. I mean, obviously at the end of the day, I think you've just given people a viewed awakening, which basically <laughs> means, <laughs> you know, I used that last night, man. That was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. You see, the thing is what we've always been doing uh might not actually be working and we you know i think it was albert einstein that uh kept that that said the uh sent the message that um the mindset that got us to this position is not the mindset that is going to take us away from um or create the results that we are we are after now you know, in a nutshell, sales is quite a broad subject. I've actually been sold by my three-year-old to give her my phone while we are on this call today. What is the maybe two to three things that you can just advise a few people that, um, you know, maybe that are ooming and ahhing about what you've just said, because this is a total par paradigm shift, um, yeah. you know, as to how people have been operating and they might just want to keep doing what they have been doing because maybe it worked um, a long time ago and they just don't want to, um, you know, uh, you know, taint a process that's actually working for them. Yeah. So, so, the first thing is you have to understand that we are in a completely different world now than what we were three years ago. And the way that business is done now is completely different to how it was three years ago. The reason that most salespeople burn out in 14 months is because they're chasing the object from the outside and it's not sustainable. They burn out, they need to go to another job, they need to do something else. The reason that many business owners don't scale is because what they're doing is they're operating from what worked for them in the past instead of operating from what's going to be working for us in the future. You know, it's our past self versus our future self. We're not the same people as what we were three years ago. So we can't operate from who we were three years ago. You know, we're... And this is where the mindset training comes in. And, and I've actually done 20 years of personal development, like a lot of money has been spent on this little guy up here. Human beings are on the planet. We either grow and evolve or we shrink and we die. There's nothing else. So if you keep doing the same thing, Groundhog Day every day, are you the person that's growing and evolving with the times? or are you actually shrinking and dying with the times? And if a business owner is doing the same thing every day for five, 10 years, they are in robotic mode, that's the industrial age of business. They're not in growth mode, which is the new age of business. So the first thing I would do is, is understand your operating system. The second thing, second thing I'd say is understand how the market conditions are changing. And the third thing is understand how your consumer's decision making has changed and who your actual target market is. Absolutely. And that's what you would preach. 
Absolutely. I really appreciate your time that you've spent, um, you know, with us on the call. You see, at Live Long Digital, we are always, um, look, you know, working towards creating, um, helping people create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. So in order for you to actually be profitable, you need to have a streamlined and optimized sales process like what Adam is mentioning. And for you to actually enjoy the business that you're, um, you know, building, you might as well attract the right kind of people with the right kind of pain and the right, um, you know, kind of mindset that you want to work with. What would be the point in actually bringing business that you don't absolutely enjoy and, um, you know, uh, put yourself in, in, in jeopardy just so that you can actually say you have closed a sale. Um, from what I've heard from, um, you know, Adam, it's, it goes with the notion that says people like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to. Adam, I thank yeah. you so much for the time that you spend with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure, my friend. I'm grateful for the opportunity to, uh, to be part of the show. Absolutely. I want to sell you on um, something that we might actually be able to do. I mean, given that your uh, topic is a very diverse topic, we could maybe create a series out of this if your time permits. We could talk about leadership. We could talk about mindset. We could talk about skill set, all that lead generation process that goes into sales and the actual authentic alignment um that goes along with that so from what i can see we have about five episodes that can um you know be a series out of this what do you say sir let's do it fantastic see i'm a really good salesman adam i thank <laughs> you so much <laughs> sold <laughs> you bought into that you didn't you, i didn't sell you onto that right fantastic adam i thank you so much for your time so obviously um if you enjoyed this episode today uh, adam has promised to show up again with um maybe three or four other episodes where we go deeper uh you know into topics of leadership and how your mindset can actually help you um you know get more sales and also the skill sets that are needed so tune in i would actually advise that you subscribe to this show that way you are not going to miss out on any of the uh exciting episodes that we're going to be bringing to you courtesy of all the experts that we have in our realm adam thank you once again Thanks, brother.